What is up, weather enthusiasts? I'm your host, Pat's Path Predictor. Let's get right into the weather. All right, so this is the situation we have right here. This is the new areas of interest we have. We now have not one, not two, but once again, we have three areas of interest according to the National Hurricane Center, one in the Caribbean, one in the Central Atlantic, and one in the Eastern Atlantic. We're going to go ahead and go over all of them as well as show you the satellite imagery with them. Let's go ahead and start with the first one. This now uh, has been something I've been watching for several days. This now has a 40% chance development. And it has the possibility of now striking the Lesser Antilles and the Bahamas as well. We'll have more of that later. But with that being said, let's go ahead and get into this. An elongated area of low pressure associated with a tropical wave over the central tropical Atlantic Ocean is producing some disorganized showers and thunderstorms. Environmental conditions are just expected to be generally favorable for some gradual development of the system over the next several days. And a tropical depression could form by the middle of next week as it moves west-northwestward uh, to, uh, that fit 10 to 15 miles per hour towards the Leeward Islands. And if we take a look at this right here, this is the satellite imagery of it right here. The organization, the rotation, it is starting to improve uh, as time continues to go on. This is something we need to monitor. Once it starts having a closed circulation, once we get some more convection to the center, that's when it becomes a tropical depression right there. So everyone needs to continue to pay attention. If you're in the Lesser Antilles, if you're in the Leeward Islands, if you're in the Virgin Islands, if you're in the Greater Antilles, Puerto Rico, Hispaniola, Cuba, and if you're in the Bahamas, you need to pay very close attention to this because there's some, the European model has been having several runs, having this strengthening into a potentially a Category 2 hurricane. We'll get more into that in just a second. But with that that being said, we're going to go ahead and go ahead and go to the Caribbean system because this is something I've been keeping an eye on too for the last several days. A trough of low pressure could develop over the northwestern Caribbean Sea over the during the earlier middle part of next week. Environmental conditions could support some slow development of the system thereafter. While it moves generally west northwestward over the northwestern Caribbean Sea towards the Yucatan Peninsula of Mexico, 20% chance of development in the next five days. It's this system. Okay, excuse me. It's this system right here, and this is where it is right now. The convection has been uh, improving a lot over the last few hours. So this is something that we're going to have to keep an eye on as time continues to go on. And the GFS also tags this as well. So we're going to have to really pay attention to this over the next few days. The convection is once again improving. If it continues to improve, the chances might go up uh, after that. So we'll have to pay attention. And the last area of interest right here is in the eastern Atlantic. A tropical wave is forecast to move off the co west coast of Africa early next week. Some gradual development of the system is possible during the middle part of next week while it moves generally westward across these far eastern tropical Atlantic. Formation chance in the next 48 hours is at 0% because it's still over land, and it's a 20% chance in the next five days, and this is the eastern Atlantic right here. This is that tropical wave that they're talking about, and this is a very large and very robust tropical wave compared to the other stuff that we've been seeing. So this is an area of interest that we need to pay attention to as time continues to go on. Let's go ahead and take a look at the global sea temperatures and the wind shear for you for today. The global sea temperatures, once again, 28. We're starting to see some parts of uh, near the Windward Islands getting up to 30 degrees Celsius or 86 degrees Fahrenheit. Once again, the boiling pot of the, uh, of the Atlantic is in the Gulf of Mexico with a very large area of 86 plus degree Fahrenheit areas right there. 30 degrees Celsius is 86 degrees Fahrenheit for those of you in the United States as, as usual. Let's go ahead and take a look at the wind shear. The Gulf of Mexico has a bit more wind shear in it now than it did yesterday, which is interesting and something we need to monitor. But the wind shear for this system right there, it the wind shear, it's not great over there, but it is expected to weaken as it continues to move towards the Lesser Antilles right here. So that's a situation we need to monitor as time continues to go on right here. So yeah, the wind shear is kind of 50-50 today when it, in several areas. The Caribbean Sea has pretty, pretty much no development past this area of tropical interest right here so yeah we'll have to continue to keep an eye on it as usual now we're going to go ahead and show you some model runs we're going to show you everything we're going to show you three gfs model runs and we're going to show two european model runs here this one's going to be a little bit of a longer video as we have a lot more areas of interest to cover and some more information to show you so let's go ahead and get right into it this is the zero z of the gfs right here it starts we, everything starts developing right there we have this Caribbean system uh, develop, make landfall in the Yucatan Peninsula, and then it really rapidly intensifies into a hurricane, and it makes landfall in northeastern Mexico right here with a pressure of 959 millibars, which is e which is either a high-end Cat 2 or low-end Category 3 hurricane right there. And the, G and the GFS also picks up 
on this area of interest that's uh, basically in the central Atlantic right now, although it doesn't exactly have it developing until later on. So that's basically the first run. The second run of the GFS also uh, continues that uh, Caribbean system right there, although it does get a little bit more interesting. So let's go ahead and take a look at it. As you can see, we have that Caribbean system develop off the coast of the Yucatan Peninsula. We have the, uh, the uh, Atlantic system, to, both of them actually start uh, to potentially develop right here. And this is only five days out, ladies and gentlemen. This this moves through the Yucatan Peninsula. The Caribbean system starts intensifying to a hurricane. The Atlantic system starts intensifying to a hurricane. And this one actually is approaching the Bahamas after exiting the Lesser Antilles right there. This uh, this system right here is makes landfall as a category around a Category 2 hurricane. Uh, strength right here in northeastern Mexico once again. So the trend's been set for either the Rio Grande Valley or Mex uh, or northeastern Mexico right there. So for the, that's basically the latest trend we've seen in the last several mile runs. And this system strengthens likely into a high-end Cat 2 and just narrowly misses the Bahamas according to the GFS, all the Europe, although the European shows something completely different to that. And then it really ramps up intensity, strengthens to pro uh, either a high-end Cat 3 or low-end Cat 4 right there. It stays off the, uh, off the coast. Uh, B uh, Bermuda could see some tropical storm force winds, and then it starts to develop, uh, drift off to sea right there. So that's the last we'll hear of that. And then the 12Z run, which is the latest from the GFS we, uh, that we have available, it's r quite interesting as well, too. Let's go ahead and show you. This thing has this Atlantic system already developing. The Caribbean system starts developing, makes landfall as likely a strong tropical storm or weak hurricane in the Yucatan Peninsula, barely weakens it, and then it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche, really intensifies, makes landfall near Veracruz, actually, as a Category 2 hurricane, although the GFS has this system not as strong and not really impacting the Bahamas right there. And then it has it strengthening later on as a category, as a potentially Category 3 hurricane, although... I can't really say that that's going to happen because a there is uh, a the waters get too cold after a certain uh, distance from North Carolina, and b the wind shear and at least right now isn't that great. So I can't really see this uh, see this happening. But I'm not ruling it out either because uh, because the tropics have been are starting to get really active. Let's go ahead and show you the European mile run. We're going to show you the. 12Z from yesterday and the 0Z from uh, today because they have really showed some system. If you were watching my Twitter video, I was telling you that the European was starting to show a lot of mile runs of hurricanes hitting the Bahamas, and this is one of them right here. In fact, this strengthens into a Cat 1 hurricane as it approaches the Lesser Antilles, either makes a close brush to or makes landfall in parts of the Leeward Islands as well as the Virgin Islands. Then it moves off, strengthens into a 965 millibar hurricane as it's approaching the Bahamas right there. So, yeah, that's the first run we have right uh, we have right there. The se uh, the second run, which is this, we're going to show is the 0Z. We're going to go ahead and backtrack this. This has it strengthening into a tropical storm as it's approaching the Leeward Islands. Then it strengthens into a hurricane, uh, likely a north of, of Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic. It starts to impact parts of the Bahamas, and we could see uh, landfalls in se several of the islands right there. So, yeah, that's the latest we have when it comes to the, the systems right here. So, yeah, we're going to have to monitor the situation the next couple of weeks. If you live in Mexico, if you live in the Leeward Islands, if you live in the Bahamas, you need to pay very close attention to those uh, those areas of interest right there. And I will continue to update you guys. The situation uh, continues to progress. With that being said, let's go ahead and wrap up this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel if you are new. It helps me out and helps me make more videos like these. The goal of the channel is to get more people engaged with weather. Also, my Hurricane Harvey documentary is coming out today at 2 p.m. Uh, Central Daylight Time. It might be out probably by the time you're watching this. So if it's, it's, if it's out already, go ahead and check it out. I put a lot of work into it, and I really appreciate all the support. But with that being said, have a wonderful day. Stay safe.